Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. In this video, I'm doing an introduction to statistics in SQL Server, and in particular, we'll be having a look at the database console command show statistics. The question we want to look at is when we're looking at execution plans, where does the estimated number of rows come from? Without any further ado, let's head over to SQL Server Management Studio and we'll go through this video. Okay, so we're in SQL Server Management Studio now. Now for this video, I will be using AdventureWorks 2019 database, which is available online to download. But if you have got a previous version of AdventureWorks, you can use that or any other database for that matter. It's not so much the data we're going to be looking at in this video, but we're going to be looking at how SQL Server gets the estimated number of rows. So the first thing I've got here is a simple query. I'm going to be selecting the sales order ID and the sales order detail ID. And we're going to be looking at that for where the product ID equals 819. Now, first of all, we're going to turn on the actual execution plan. And we can do that in a number of ways. We can either press Control M, we can select Query, Include Actual Execution Plan, or there's a little icon at the top um, to select that on as well. I execute this query, and again, uh, the results grid here is not what I'm actually looking at. What I wanna actually click on is the execution plan, and I look at this arrow here. So I've just selected a simple select for this for this demonstration. And we can see here the estimated number of rows per execution is 195, which is the same as the actual, which is great. Um, so that means that SQL Server is choosing a, well, has the ability to choose a very good execution plan for this query. And in this case, it's done an index seek operation, which I would expect because Product ID has a non-clustered index on it, and the two columns we're selecting, sales order ID and sales order detail ID, make up the clustered index, which will be stored as part of the non-clustered index. So we only need to go to the non-clustered index in this case. Now what we want to find out is where do those rows actually come from? Now SQL Server, creates and maintains statistics about the distribution of values in one or multiple columns of tables and indexed views. So it uses this information, it's, it's known as cardinality estimates, and that information is used uh, by the query engine to produce execution plans. So in terms of statistics, SQL Server maintains a histogram and density vectors. In this particular video, we'll be looking at the histogram side of things. So without further ado, we're gonna have a look at a database console command. That's any command that starts with dbcc. Uh, and in this, we're going to be looking at the statistics. So for this, we write dbcc show underscore statistics uh, and what we pass into this this command is the the table or indexed view name and then we can either pass in the statistics name the index name or the column name so in this case what we're going to be passing in is a table name which is sales dot sales order detail uh, and you'll notice the table name is within speech marks if you like uh, and then we'll have the index name as well. So I'm just going to open Object Explorer, got my sales.sales or sales detail table, and I've got my non clustered index here, which I'm going to conveniently just drag onto the screen. So it's ix underscore sales order detail underscore product ID. So I'm just going to run this and we'll have a look at what this shows. Okay, we can see within the results, this is how the statistics are actually made up. So we get three results uh, from running this command. We get the, the statistics header here, uh, which includes details like the name, when it was last updated, the rows used to create this statistic ob statistics object, 
Um, and you'll notice in a lot larger tables, um, sometimes only a sample of rows is used to generate these statistics. The second result set we get is the, the density vector. Uh, and we're not going to talk about that today, we will talk about that in other videos. Um, but the third result set is the histogram, and that's what we're going to have a look at today. Now, I'm just going to alter this command slightly, so towards the end of that, after we've indicated our, in this case, our table and index name, we're just going to write with histogram, and we'll run this, and what this will do is just display our histogram result set. And I'll just give a quick explanation of what this is showing. So range high key is actually referring to our, our key in this case, which is our product ID. So each of these values represents a product ID. Now it's important to note regarding histograms, they can only store a maximum of 200 steps. And we can see here we, are, we have 200 rows. So no matter how many rows we have in the table, whether it's a million, whether it's a billion, whether it's a trillion, we will only have 200 steps. So the, the range high key is the product ID. And how that's stored is, let's scroll down to an example here. So we can see we've got the key of 716. And then the next row is for 718. Now range high key of 718 will be storing 718 and 717 within that particular row and that will become more apparent when we go through some examples luckily I've already had a look at the statistics object for this and I've chose 819 on purpose so we're going to scroll down to have a look at 819 in this case so I found it here and I'll zoom into that on screen so we have a few columns here. We know range high key is the key, the product ID. Uh, we have range rows. Now range rows represents the total amount of rows that are above the previous high key, in this case 815, but are less than the current key. So this, will, this 218 represents the number of rows that are greater than the key value, the product ID value of 815, but less than the product ID value of 819. So there's 218 rows that, come, uh, that is spread across product IDs 816, 817 and 818. We don't know how they're spread, but we just know that many rows exist. The next column, uh, EQ, short for equal, equal rows in this case, is the number of rows that are equal to our key value. So we saw in the introduction, and I'll show again, I'll just run this query again, uh, but I'll just highlight this first. So 195 rows are equal to the key value of 819. So if I run this query again, and we're just, like I say, let's ignore the results grid but take a look at the execution plan and just the estimated number of rows we can see that's 195 and if we go back to our statistics object and scroll down to 819 we can see there that our equal number of rows is 195 distinct range rows represents the unique keys within this range. So we've discussed our range in this case includes 816, 817 and 818 as product IDs, but there's only two distinct range rows that actually exist. What we can gather from this is one product ID isn't present, and we'll see that shortly when we go through an example. Average range rows is simply range rows divided by distinct range rows. What this is giving us is we know that 218 rows exist between those two key values and we know there's two distinct key values. So the average range rows is 109, it's just simply range rows divided by distinct range rows. 
So let's take a look at a, another example. In this case, we'll keep it simple. We'll keep working with this. So we know product ID 818 falls between these two keys. So when we input where product ID equals 818, we can have a look at what the cardinality estimation is, and we can see if that matches to this statistics object here. So if I change this to product ID 818, execute the query, and this is an interesting example because we don't get any results here. And earlier I mentioned that one of those keys must not actually exist, in this case it's 818. But if we have a look at the execution plan, we can see that the estimated number of rows was still 109. Even though the actual number of rows is zero, the estimated number of rows is 109. If we go back to our statistics object and scroll down to our 819 range high key, we can see that our average range rows is 109, which matches the estimated number of rows. So we can see that what's interesting is the statistics don't exist at an individual key level, but at ranges. Now, what this means is when the query engine was deciding on an execution plan for that query, it didn't actually know that no rows existed for that product ID based on the statistics that it keeps. Now, if it did keep statistics about every key, we'd imagine they'd be absolutely massive. We'd get incredibly accurate cardinality estimates and pretty good execution plans but we'd end up with massive statistics objects which would probably in some cases be the same size or if not just a bit smaller than our actual table or indexed views so it wouldn't be worthwhile creating those so there's, there's got to be a balance in everything in SQL Server there's a balance now if we try 817 Again, we're, we know it's within that range. We're expecting the estimate of 109. Let's have a look at the execution plan. And we can see the estimated number of rows is 109, but the actual number of rows is 104. Now, we know that um, there are 200... Let's just double-check that. So we can have a play around with some maths. So we know there's 218 rows that exist with, within that range. We know key 818 doesn't have any. We know that 817 has 104. So that should leave 114. So if we run it again for 816, again we'll see the estimate of 109 but we should see the actual of 114, I think I said it was. Yes, so we can see the estimated is 109, but the actual is 114. So we can see if our data is quite evenly distributed amongst our key values, our statistics are improved and we get better execution plans. However, that's not always the case. We can certainly have tables where we have values. We might have key value one that includes one row and key value two that includes a thousand rows. And that's why the histogram is maintained for us. Now, what would happen if we have a look at a, a range? Let's go back to our histogram initially. And we can use some simple maths here. So if we have a look at, let's say, where product ID is greater than 815 and product ID less than or equal to 819. So we know we can ignore this. We're not looking at that range. We're, we're looking at the range of 819. Now to calculate this, we would simply have our range rows, which in this case is greater than 815, but less than 819. So we've got 218 
plus a 195, which is the number of rows equal to our key value. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, 413. Let's execute the query and have a look. 413. So even for a range of rows, those histograms are still used. And as the range gets wider, obviously to calculate the correctness um, and predict how many es the estimated number of rows is going to be more complex. So that's why I've chosen a simple example in this case. And the last example I want to look at is what if we choose a key value that is higher than is included in the histogram. And this can actually happen. So within SQL Server, yes, statistics are maintained, but there are some general rules around the maintenance. They're not, as we insert more and more rows into a table, they're not updated automatically. It happens after a certain number of updates, inserts rather, or updates, uh, or a certain number of um, new rows are inserted. If we was to insert a million rows into a table that only contained a hundred rows, then SQL Server would recognize, well, I'm not gonna be able to use the statistics I've got. I need to regenerate those statistics. So let's have a look. Our highest key value is 999 conveniently. So let's try and have a look if our product ID equals a thousand. We, 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 we get no rows in the results, which is what we expected. We knew that nothing uh, with a product ID higher than 999 exists. But if we have a look at our estimated number of rows, it's one. And in fact, that will be the case for any number we enter in here. If we change this to a million and we execute the query, we know we'll get no rows, but we'll still get that estimated number of rows as one. So when we don't have the, the step in the histogram that will cover that key value, we can see that the estimated number of rows is one. Now this may be a problem because the query optimizer may choose a different execution plan as to what we'd expect. So when it's deciding on what operators to use within an execution plan, the number of rows or the cardinality plays a key part of that decision making process. It's important SQL Server or the query engine has a good estimate of the amount of rows it's working with before it decides on the execution plan. Now in other videos on the channel we will go on to discuss how statistics are maintained or could be created. But this was just uh, an introduction and the database console command show statistics is, is very valuable in this case. We can have a look in there to see if our statistics are out of date or stale or we may need to update them. So if you're having a look at a query and you see a massive difference between your estimated number of rows and your actual number of rows, this can actually be a good place to start. Really hope you've enjoyed that video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Check out the other videos on my channel if you're interested in T-SQL querying, programming, data engineering or data analysis. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.